Amuna 13 is an example of the resilient transformation of one of Medellin's vibrant neighborhoods. Medellin, the second large city in Colombia, has undergone a remarkable transformation over the years. And at the heart of this urban revitalization is the Comuna 13 neighborhood, once known for its troubled past and violence associated with drug cartels, Comuna 13 has risen above its challenges to become a symbol of hope, resilience, and community spirit. In this video, we will share with you our experience when we visited this neighborhood and explored the inspiring story of Comuna 13, which has become a shining example of urban development and social transformation. At the end of our tour, there was also a fantastic surprise of the graffiti tour that is present throughout Comuna 13 and was a wonderful addition to our tour. Comuna 13, located on the hillsides of Medellin, was deeply affected by the violence that plagued the city during the 1980s and 1990s. It gained international notoriety as one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in the world. The neighborhood became a stronghold of drug cartels and guerrilla groups, leading to a cycle of poverty, crime, and fear. However, the people of Comuna 13 refused to be defined by their past and embarked on a journey of transformation. We started our tour by walking on the other streets on the lower part of the hills of Comuna 13 and by following our wonderful tour guide, Oscar. Oscar was amazing, experienced, knowledgeable, and very, very kind. As we walked through these little alleys that would get us to the metro station to take the cable card, he explained all the history, the meaning of the street art on the walls, and also one of the first stops was a bakery that would bake a very traditional and typical cake that uh, was a typical dough and uh, some cheese inside the dough. It was absolutely delicious. The transformation of Comuna 13 began with a commitment to social inclusion and community-driven initiatives. The government, along with the local organizations and residents, focused on improving infrastructure, education, and public spaces. One of the most significant changes was the installation of outdoor escalators, as well as the cable card, which provided easier access to the neighborhood's steep hills, previously a major barrier for residents. This innovative solution not only improved mobility, but also brought a sense of pride and hope to the community. As we got on the cable card, Oscar started explaining the history and so many other details about the neighborhood. Because we have something we call the metro culture, which is basic things. Here you cannot beg, you cannot perform, you cannot uh, make graffitis, you cannot eat. And all the people, they have the metro culture with them, so all these rules are accomplished. It's like, uh, yeah, it's a behavior, like, I mean, to create the respect. Uh, yeah. It belongs this is the pride of the city. Yeah. Also, okay. ac accessibility, they can, look, they can pull up this seat. Wow. It's going so to make enough space for a person using a wheelchair. wheelchair. Wow. This is from France, the, 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 all the system. So down here, they call it the metro, is connected with the cable car, and those green buses also, they are part of the metro system that they will take the people to the areas of the neighborhood where the cable car nor the metro, they can go. So down here, you see, look at the houses. Some of the houses down here, they look really good, yeah. really nice. Some of them, they have like a backyard or a terrace, but the houses, they look nice. 
then you will see. So here, and they are just one block from the city, let's call it, because if you are in the metro station, you are close to the city. So they increase their level of these people after they build, right? Then the higher that we start going in the mountain, the poor that the people and the houses are going to be. Now. And you'll see also how the, the neighborhood and the city starts like trans, uh, transformation, okay? Because the streets disappear. There is only anguish, no? You see that the city of Medellin looks like red, the mountains, yeah. not green anymore. <laughs> because of our traditional construction method, the bricks. Okay? Also, one more thing, people say like, why uh, they don't paint? Because in most of the cases, what we see is the back part of the house. So the facade of the house, we don't see it. And that's the one like painted or, you know, like, like fixed. So the back part, is what we see are the bricks. That's why the mountains look like red. Because of the... Yeah. Take a look where the black car with a red roof, you see in the corner? Yes. Yeah. That's the end of the street. And look what starts in there. All the way up, stairs. 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 Oh, wow. For go to the houses of the people. Now imagine coming as a new person to the neighborhood. And you taking your fridge, yeah. your furniture, all your stuff. Or if you already live in the neighborhood, you want to build a second floor, take all the materials. Or just think about uh, the woods that you bought for the, the week, taking all that up there through the stairs. Just a uh, supermarket, like every day uh, you're back for yep. supermarket. So basically with these uh, cable cars, you can take everything up there? Like yeah, the, the yeah. Fridge but also everything? to some areas. No, 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 not a fridge. Okay. That's why I looked at the song, like thin, or narrow streets oh, yes. to some places. Let's say if you live in the middle of the mountain, now from here, you gotta hire a person or three or four guys who help you taking your stuff up into oh. your house. Also take a look something. Most of the houses in here, they have more than three floors. Yeah. Okay, so all these neighborhoods, they started as invasions back in the 60s. All this used to be a green mountain and the valley of Medellin where the city started was already like packed, okay? So people started moving to the hillsides because there was a space. And in there they established, they invade the, the area. They put a house of wood and then after some time they started building with bricks. Then second generation, a daughter, she built a second floor. In 2000, uh, a third generation built a third floor and like that. So all these houses that you see, they are like one family, several generations of that family living together. Also, um, you need license, like a permission for a building in Medellin and in Colombia. These people won't ask you, ask for it to the city hall. Yeah, yeah. Because also, nobody from the neighborhood is going to the, call the yeah, city hall. Yeah? Yeah. Just a couple of guys building, you see? Yeah. So this guy is giving job to one to two guys. Like the owner of the house is giving job to three people from the neighborhood, maybe four people from the neighborhood. So that is why nobody from this street, the neighbors, they are going to call, hey, they are building without permission because he's giving jobs to, to your father, to your husband. They're, they're uh, supporting the community. Now, if you do the same in Poblado, next day they will be shutting, like closing your construction. I think that will happen today. I think truck that is coming down the hill. We oh. will appear in, two, in one moment. Okay. Wow. That's why here is very common the manual stick in the cars because of the hills that we have. Oh, Look to your right here. I still you can see like the shape of the mountain, but you don't see the mountain anymore. anymore. Yeah. Just like a stairs. Look at the yellow bars. There's an old person going. Oh, yeah. you see? That was the beginning. Who knows until what part of the neighborhood has to go? But it's a good exercise. <laughs> yeah, we did our first share yesterday in Guatape. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Going up the rock. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
this light here. Also, if you look behind, you see the, the city, it's like foggy. Yeah. Because oh, as we are yeah. about it, uh, it is a mix of CO2 because all the traffic, all the cars going to the offices in the morning mix with the, so that pollution mixed with the CO2 after the rain from last night. Uh, so it is like establishing the valley and it takes more or less until the afternoon when it clears up a little bit. Okay. So in this moment, like we have to be very close to a mountain to see it green. Yeah. But from the distance, they look just black. Sometimes when it clears up in the afternoon, you see the real green on the mountain. Look down there, there's like a basketball court. Yeah. And the green ones, so oh, always yeah. the government is bringing recreation. All these people, they have utilities, they have power, they have aqueduct system. Internet. Uh, they, there's internet, wow. there is satellite TV. Oh my God. But also, sometimes, it's sort of, oh, look, right, in your right side, yeah. gentrification. That is gentrification. Yeah. So, construction the companies oh. get in to, like, next to poor areas, buying land very cheap and building massive projects. Mm. Uh, and yeah, you see the cable for electricity also. Yeah. I live in I live in the in, in your right side where you see like in the valley again. Yeah. Before before this mountain that is inside the valley, there's like bricks buildings that on top they are like white. white. Yeah. Yeah. I live, I live there. So these are like also the companies they come, they build, but they don't have the intention to remove anybody from here. But it, it, will happen. Happen. it will happen. It will happen. Eventually. Yeah. That's yeah. the future. Yeah, as the price goes up, yeah. always. Because the future is not to expand to the site, but to go up. Buildings. So yeah. because in the same area where you have uh, 50 houses, you can have 300 apartments. So this is the top of the mountain. We left Comuna 13 behind us, and now is in front of you Comuna number seven, named Robledo. Oh. Looks pretty much the same, so by medium to low plus. Look, what how is that is yellow it? bridge over there? It's, it's just, just like a pedestrian bridge, bridge. Oh. yeah. But take a look what happened here. If you want, uh, it will be here, the mountain. Look, will appear houses wow. made of wood, but look, they have satellite TV. <laughs> see? <laughs> yeah, but look at the access. You see the stairs? They made like the stairs of wood. Yeah, wood. Look, all these houses, look. So that's how they start. And later they start building with bricks and concrete when they have enough money to do it. Okay? But at the beginning, it's like that. Look at the green sticks holding the property. No access, that's why as they are far from everything, they are number one. Oh, okay. So the minimum is one, the maximum is six. We have people reaching up in Colombia to be number 20, but it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And we have people putting up to be under zero, but it doesn't exist. Right. So you can be number six, and, there's, and it doesn't mean you're rich. Just because okay. where you live. That you can be able to deal with the mortgage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's going to be richer people than you. Wow, the water. Nice, take a look at this highway here. This highway was the one they were fighting for. Because this one is the one that takes us after driving nine hours to the ocean. Oh, okay. So, because of this, those groups came here to this area for fighting to be the owners of this area here. So, if you, if you want to cross my road, you gotta pay me. <laughs> Taxes. Yeah. A, a toll road. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why the people they bring their clothing outside. Look to the to the balconies, yeah, to the windows. Some of them they have terraces, so they can do it in there. But some mm -hmm. others they just don't. Look more invasions. Look next to the road. There's a there's a little 
a spot and a small place, make a house. There's a schools here also in this area. Down here, all this area, look, invasion. Before pandemic, they didn't have one brick. And now look, a lot of bricks. Not because of the color of the wood, I can tell you that house, the long one, it's new. See, they are putting the columns. Yeah. But here behind me will appear buildings. Yeah. In 2010 in Medellin, we hosted the South American Games. So those are like the Olympics, but of South America. So as always they do in the cities where they do the Olympics, they build a village, <laughs> like, like complex yeah. buildings Much for the athletes, now. right? So it happened here. The South American village, after they finish the games, they use this as social housing. Back in 2010, they cost more or less 20,000 US dollars one apartment of this one. In this moment, they can be more or less 30,000. Okay. What is that building? Okay, again, gentrification. Construction oh, okay. company, they bought probably, let's say, 60, 100 houses <laughs> to people. And then in that area, they built, there can be 300 apartments. Or they get a deal for receiving one apartment or paying one apartment in there or something. Yeah. Because also they will they sell you the idea of security. Look, you're living on the edge of the mountain in a house of wood, you get flooded, you get uh, like drops, mm -hmm. cracks. So sell us your spot, your land, very cheap, and we'll sell you, let's say, affordable one apartment, safer, concrete, and mm -hmm. you can get more decent to buy. Yeah, you'll see here in this area, there's a lot of buildings in here already. Look from here, there's already a lot of buildings. Uh, yeah. So here we will get off to, to go and see a viewpoint of the city, okay? okay? Let's see what can we see because of the problem. Uh, yeah. uh, my god, this is so clean. Everything. Everything. All these works from 4.30 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. When they finish, they come this way, they go inside closes. Also, in Medellin, they were taking care of the people in the pandemic. Look, no contact here. Have the soap. Size of the building. Oh, COVID vaccination too? Yeah. Oh, this is cool. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We live in the advanced world. Did you go to the downtown? Right? Yes, we went you, very quickly. Well, in, in Cross it, yeah. right? Uh -huh. it, it is like this, like a triangle. Yeah. It has a needle shape. That is the downtown of Medellin. That is the tallest building of the city. The needle shape is because it represents the textile industry. Mm -hmm. On top, it has a, a big window on the right side. On top, like which a little could be hole, the hole for the needle to put the thread <laughs> in the needle. Okay? Uh, 37 floors in total. 
So uh, that is downtown of Medellin. Then over there, we have a, a like a flat area that is empty, green. That is the local airport, a small planes, local uh, flights, helicopters. And behind, uh, buildings in the mountain of El Poblado that in this moment, because of the fog, we cannot see the mansions up in the oh, mountain yes, in yeah. that side. But then it's totally different when you start moving here to your left. Not too many buildings, and look, the higher that you look in the up. mountain, the poor that the people As we continued okay. the tour, our guide also showed us this blue metal container, which is a center for mental and psychological help. Basically, the residents who need to speak to a psychologist can just go to this place and the treatment is completely confidential and free of charge. take your car up there, the only way of living is backwards, <laughs> reverse. <laughs> Look at the people where they park their cars, very like tight, close to the sidewalks. So also, this side here is as much as we can because cars on the other side of the truck come, they come in, in pools because of the hill that we're having here, okay? So let's try to use the side. Yeah. Comuna 13 is renowned for its vibrant street art, which tells the stories of its past struggles and present aspirations. As we walked through the streets of Comuna 13, we noticed that every wall is covered in vibrant graffiti and murals. These works of art tell the stories of the neighborhood's history and the struggles and triumphs of its people. Local artists, inspired by the spirit of resilience, have turned the neighborhood's walls into breathtaking murals, creating an open-air museum that attracts visitors from around the world. The colorful and expressive artwork not only beautifies the area, but also serves as a powerful symbol of transformation and creativity. Our guide, Oscar, had been doing this tour for a long time, and he had a vast amount of knowledge about these artworks of Comuna 13, and he shared with us the stories behind the murals and the meaning behind the graffiti. We also saw murals that paid homage to Medellin's famous soccer team, Atletico Nacional, as well as murals that celebrate the Afro-Colombian heritage of the community.
Perhaps the most inspiring aspect of Comuna 13 is the strong sense of community, resilience, and solidarity. The residents of this neighborhood have faced numerous challenges, but they have come together to support one another and create a safer and more inclusive environment. Community organizations have been instrumental in promoting education, healthcare, and social programs that have had a positive impact on the lives of residents, particularly children and young people. Comuna 13 is a testament to the power of community-driven initiatives, resilience, and determination. Through the combined efforts of its residents, local organizations, and the government, the neighborhood has undergone a remarkable transformation. Today, it stands as a shining example of urban revitalization and social progress. Comuna 13 serves as a reminder that no matter how difficult the circumstances, with the right collective spirit, positive change is possible. It is a neighborhood that invites visitors to experience its vibrant culture, immerse themselves in its rich history, and witness the transformative power of community. As we wrapped up the tour, our guide Oscar reminded us that the graffiti and murals in Comuna 13 are not just for decoration. They are a reflection of the community's identity and history. They serve as a reminder of the neighborhood's past struggles and its ongoing transformation. If you're ever in Medellin, we highly recommend taking a graffiti tour of Comuna 13 neighborhood. It is a unique and inspiring way to learn about the city's history and culture and to witness the power of art in transforming communities.